In five minutes, let's add an attractive and color balance border to this image, which is 3 to aspect ratio, which is pretty good for on-screen presentation or printing. Let's begin by removing the lock to the right of the layer thumbnail. And from the bottom of the layers palette, I'd like to add two new blank layers above the image you can see here. So click that twice. But now I'd like to reselect the layer that contains the beach scene. To add the extra canvas, we need to go up to our image menu, top left of the screen, and choose canvas size. And in the width and height, I'd like to measure this in percentage terms, because if we make the width or add to the width 20%, but we add 30% to the height, that will allow for the shape of the image. And when I click OK, you can see it creates quite a nice border around the outer edge of the image. Now we need the magic wand tool from the top left of the toolbox. Once we select it, just click into that transparent area and you'll notice it's easily selected. Coming back into the layers, select the layer immediately above the image and we're going to flood this with black. If you look at the bottom of the toolbox, you'll see black is our foreground color. You can use the paint bucket tool, you'll find that in the toolbox, but Alt Backspace is far quicker. You'll notice that the selection is still in place. So select the top layer of the three that we've got created on the right hand side. And in this layer, we're going to sample a color from the image itself. So what I'd like to do is to go back to the toolbox and pick up this eyedropper tool. I'm going to click around in this area here. I'm going to pick up a sort of a neutral bluey green and there you see it as the foreground color. So because we've still got that selection in place, if I hit Alt Backspace again, there you can see the border color that we've selected. Hit Control D to remove the selection. Selecting the layer in the center, the black layer, what we're going to do here is blur this just a little bit. We do that by going to the filters menu, blur, Gaussian blur. The setting you use is going to be personal. There you can see I have chosen 40 pixels. Click OK and that gives us a lovely bit of drop shadow to the border. It almost looks as though the picture is actually sitting on the bench in front of us. Reselect the top layer and we're going to zoom in because this is computer generated color and as you can see it's very smooth. Let's give it a bit of texture. Filter. Noise. Add noise. Somewhere around 3 to 5% of Gaussian monochromatic noise, click OK. Control 0 will fit the image back on screen. Now we've got a lovely drop shadow, a border that's in harmony with the image, and we've got a delicate texture too. Now we do have some of our five minutes left, so let's add a couple of more embellishments which are purely optional. I'm going to hold the control key and click the top layer. You can see it's instantly reselected. What I'd like to do is to inverse that selection. So if we go to the select menu at the top left of the screen, there we'll find inverse. Coming back to the layers on the right hand side, I'm going to create a new blank layer right at the top of the stack because I'm going to put a thin line on that selection and I want it on a new layer. To do that, it's edit stroke. I'm going to put about seven pixels. Let's change this to quite a bright color, not entirely white, but a pale gray. We're going to be placing it on the inside. Let's hit OK and I'll hit Control D to remove the selection. There you can see that delicate line around the outside. Because we have it on another layer, of course, it's infinitely changeable. And to quickly finish, if we wanted to reduce the size of the image and put a white border around the edge of that, 
select it. Control T is the free transform tool. Drag in a corner toggle. Position your image and commit it with the tick. Now we need one more layer. One blank layer. Drag it to the bottom of the stack. Flood it with white. White can be seen on the left hand side as our background colour. So I'm going to hit control backspace. And there we have it.